Well, welcome to the Western Cape Teachers Forum, a platform where we educate, empower, and excel. We educate through dialogue and so that we can get empowered by the knowledge and the skills that we've gained so that we can excel in our respective spaces. Now, two days ago marked the beginning of Women's Month, the 1st of August, and so we wish all our women warriors a peaceful and a productive and a blessed Women's Month. This is the month where we remember the contribution that our women made uh, to history, to society, and to culture. And I want to say that we are truly nothing without you, and we salute you for your sacrifices, for your families, for your children, and for your communities. You are indeed a woman of strength. Uh, next week is a public, uh, or rather a long weekend as well, uh, as we commemorate uh, Women's Day on the 8th of August next week, uh, Monday, I think. And so that's when our, us as a country, we officially acknowledge uh, the woman of, 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 of our time. Now, tonight we are going to continue our segment on leave measures. Last week, we we delved into sick leave, normal sick leave, and we spoke a little bit about the sick leave cycle, and we spoke about all kinds of scenarios that related to uh, your medical certificate, the requirements for it, and, and so on. And, and, and tonight, we're going to look at the other issue of temporary incapacity leave, as well as permanent incapacity leave, and then we're going to do a little bit of family responsibility leave. And so if you have questions outside of those three uh, leave measures or types, um, you're welcome to drop it in the comment section and I'll ask for, um, our guests to, to deal with that perhaps via email or you can connect with him via email. We'll share his details and uh, we can take it from there. But tonight we're only dealing with family responsibility leave, urgent private matters, and then of course uh, temporary incapacity leave or pillar as it is also known. And the gentleman who's going to try and make sense of this all for us is, again, Mr. Faiz Tassim from Naptoza, Western Cape. Now, Faiz is the executive officer in the Labor Department. Faiz, good evening and thank you very much for once again gracing us with your presence. Hi, good evening, Lee. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, sir. Well, listen, for ease, I'm going to I'm going to jump right into it. I want us to make um, optimal use of time, and so if you don't mind, I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to put up the, the the slideshow, and we can get cracking. And of course, as usual, please tell us where you're watching from, and put your questions and comments in the section in the comment section, uh, either on YouTube or Facebook. And please share this live. Uh, we've got 44,000 followers, and we don't always get to each and every one of you because of algorithms and all kinds of things. And so you can help us by reaching as many people as we possibly can, especially educators employed by the state. So please hit the share button right now, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, so that we can ensure that this valuable information reaches as many people as it possibly can. But is, I'm going to give it over to you, sir. We're going to start off with temporary incapacity leave. Okay, no, no, thank you, Lee. Just a quick recap uh, um, of last week, just on sick leave, uh, Lee, in that, I said the cycle started this year on the 1st of January 2022. The cycle will end on the 31st of December 2024. All the leave categories that we discussed last week, as well as this weekly, for those who might not have tuned in last week, you will find in the Employment of, in the Employment of Educators Act. Within the Employment of Educators Act, you'll find the Personnel Administrative Measures, which we refer to as the PAM. If you, if you go to the PAM, you go to Chapter H, that is where you will find the various categories of leave that educators qualify for or not qualify for. So once you have exhausted your 36 days prior to the cycle ending, right? Like I said, this is the first year of the new or the current cycle. And uh, for some reason or the other, you have now exhausted your 36 days, right? And then you need to, and, and, and you get sick and you need to apply for, for sick leave uh, seeing that, that you have now exhausted your 36 days, you will have to now apply for temporary capacity leave, right? Now, colleagues and listeners, this is very important in that temporary capacity leave, before I just explain in extra A and in extra B and what are the requirements thereof, is that I briefly mentioned it last week because there was a question on it, just quickly went through it, Lee, and I hope you don't mind me repeating this because I feel it is important that... And I've mentioned last week, according to the Labor Relations Act and also the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, I as an employee have the right to take off sick leave when I am sick or ill, right? Once I've exhausted that 36 days, what my employee is saying, if I'm employed in the public service, that for ease or leave, um, you're welcome to apply for timbering capacity leave, right? Now, 
where sick leave is my right, temporary incapacity leave is not my right. So what am I saying? All right. When I apply for sick leave, I've, I've followed all the prescripts. If it's more than three days, I've attached a sick note. And then I've completed the Z1 form. And nine out of ten times, my leave will be approved. Because it's my right. Okay. But with temporary incapacity leave, it works slightly differently. In that, I'm now at the mercy of the employer when it comes to having my leave approved or declined. And I'm speaking about temporary incapacity leave. So what does that mean? Uh, I don't really use the example of a of a of a top-up contract, a cell phone contract, in that uh, my top-up contract, uh, for the sake of this example, let's say it's 350 rand for the month, uh, with its data or just normal airtime, doesn't matter. But from the first of August to the to the end of August, right? 31st of August. Okay. So Come 20th of August, and if I've used up all my airtime or data, I go to the shop and I buy more airtime. Doesn't matter what amount. Once I've punched that code in, then I'm back on air. I need to emphasize the temporary capacity leave is not an extension of sick leave where I just go and top it up with temporary capacity leave. So, so that is the first point I need to stress. Okay. So, so what are temporary capacity leave then? So my, 38, my 36 days has been exhausted. I need to apply for temporary incapacity leave, whether it's one day. Remember, I said last week, uh, for one day when I'm absent, there's no pattern, or I'm not in breach of the eight-week rule. It is not necessary for me to attach a sick note. When I apply for temporary incapacity leave, even for one day, it now becomes mandatory for me to attach a sick certificate or a sick note, right, from my medical practitioner. That's number one. Number two. I've said last week when we covered medical certificates, um, within my 36 days, it is not necessary for me to divulge what's wrong with me. I can if I want to, but I will have to give my medical practitioner uh, consent to divulge what's wrong with me. Flu, diarrhea, headache, doesn't matter what. I will have to give consent. And obviously if I don't, my medical practitioner then can't say I have the flu as an example. But when I apply for temporary incapacity leave, I will have to divulge what's wrong with me. Within my 36 days, um, my employer can't phone the doctor and ask what's wrong with Faiz, right? The extent can only be you book him off frequently. Is he that ill that you obviously every time book him off? That is the extent. But with temporary incapacity leave, on an extra A and an extra B, which, will, which I will explain shortly, there is a uh, a blog or description on there where I will have to give consent to my employer should they require more medical information from me I give them consent to phone my doctor to say doctor what's, what's actually wrong with me? you booked him off for 10 days you booked him off for 20 days what is exactly what's wrong with him so you give consent whether they will do it or not that's a different matter but you will have to give consent okay then a mixture A is for, as you see on the slide there, Lee, uh, in extra A is for short periods. So what's a short period? Short periods of temporary capacity leave will imply anything between one day and 29 days, right? So one day, five days, 20 days, 29 days at a time, I will complete a next year A. With that, it is mandatory for my sick certificate or my sick note. Um, with that, I will have to give consent for my to, to my employer, if they wanted to, they can inquire from my medical practitioner if they wanted more additional information. And then what's also important to note, Lee and viewers and listeners, is that whatever additional medical evidence I have becomes now very pertinent and important in that Temporary incapacity, but, uh, one of the major difference between temporary incapacity leave and sick leave is that I need to be temporarily incapacitated. Otherwise, I couldn't come for the whole day, or for two days, or for 20 days, or for, 20, or for 30 days, whatever amount of period, or how long the period is that my practitioner uh, uh, books me off for. What's important to know here, yeah, there'll be x-rays, doctor's reports, blood results, x-rays, whatever, 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 to prove that I'm not sick, but then I am incapacitated for this period yeah. of time. In I just want to... 
Yeah, yeah. And just a quick one. You know, I'm looking yeah. at the word temporary incapacity leave. Now I understand temporary not being permanent. Okay. Yes. Now yeah. when I look at when I look at the word incapacity and Afrikaans must be Now, yeah. uh, uh, and, and the onus is on the teacher or the educator or the employee rather to prove incapacity. Now, if I consider a teacher, a teacher's core function, which is is to teach right to deliver the curriculum now what do i use to teach i use my voice for example um and i'm making a weird example here if for whatever reason i've got a severe leg issue now the question that comes into my mind can i still deliver my core function which is to teach do i need my leg to teach would and i know you're not the employer but could that possibly be a reason as to why they will not consider that in, te- in, in the context of incapacity. No, I understand. I understand your question, Lee. But like I said, my medical practitioner, physician, doctor, specialist, whoever he or she is, must then explain or give a reason to the extent of my of my injury or my illness and why I can't come to school. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's a very good question. So my medical evidence that I provide, I've mentioned the X-ray, a blood test. Uh, doctor's reports, whatever, to prove that I'm incapacitated. So that will determine whether I can come to school or not. All right? So it's just based on my medical evidence. So what happens when I apply for temporary incapacity leave? Okay? So let's just start with uh, uh, the short period. So I've used, I've utilized all my 36 days for whatever reason, and now I need two, three, four, five, ten days as an example to apply for temporary capacity leave, then I will attach an extra aid, all right? Mandatory to that is my medical certificate, okay? Uh, let's let's just make, make it an easy one. I have a broken I have a broken arm or I have a broken leg. Then the yeah. x-ray will show there's the break and then uh, I was hospitalized or whatever the case may be for one or two days or maybe I had an op. Um, and then the recovery period is eight days, 10 days, whatever the case might be. That's a fairly straightforward one. Your your tricky one comes normally where I can't provide x-rays or blood tests and things like that. Um, your, 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 as an example, um, I apply for stress-related illnesses. So there's no x-ray that can determine uh, yeah. how stressed I am and things like that. So that becomes a bit tricky. But then it is up to my psychiatrist and my psychologist to write proper reports as to why they would book me off. So that is mandatory. That is an extra aid. Yeah. Now, I think the date was um, the 1st of October 2021. Uh, we previously had uh, an extra It was a fairly straightforward form where the doctor didn't need to complete. But the new an extra I think it kicked in on the 1st of October. Slightly different. Couple. There's a couple of amendments. So just be wary of that. They don't complete the old, the older version of it. And then um, the doctor has now a section there that they fill in and so on to give exact. And uh, what's nice about the new form, it gives a bit of guidance to, to my physician, practitioner, doctor, as to what information is required. Obviously, it's a very broad overview. So it doesn't speak to a broken leg. It doesn't speak to stress. It doesn't speak to... Uh, 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 what do you call it, diarrhea or cancer or whatever, back problems. But it's just a generic, uh, let's call it a pro forma, just to give me an idea as a practitioner yeah. what he or she needs to complete. Because what the viewers must take note of, what's important here is that my medical evidence that I provide will then determine whether my leave will be approved or declined. Okay? Just before I also I get to B, uh, which is the next year B, what the employer what the employer do is that we're talking about a, a, a leave cycle. So for this instance, we're referring to a three-year leave cycle, right? So what the employer do is if I ease applies for temporary capacity leave from the 1st of August to the 20th of August, that is 20 days, um, and I need to complete the next year. Hey, what the employer do is they take my next year, I, all the medical evidence that I provided, let's assume I have a broken leg there, put in the x-rays, the doctor's report, all the medication that it's required for me to ease the pain and to, to get, to get uh, back on my feet. With that, the employer attached to the arthritis manager who assesses my next year, a two yeah. leave cycles, 
of me. In okay. other words, that's six years. <clears throat> Just to see, remember last week we spoke about the pattern and we spoke about Monday and Friday and, 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 and things like that. Gotcha. And now they take all leave into into consideration. Into consideration. Uh, not just sick leave, it's family responsibility, exam, whatever type, urgent private matters, whatever leave I've I've taken, they take all of that into consideration. So we'll take your sick. file, my dear. Yes, he's for he's a Friday person. <laughs> easy, you know, yeah. does he utilize his 36 yeah. days in, in the cycle? Um, when he when he is absent even for one or two days, does he attach a medical certificate? So yeah. these are the things that they look at. And, and 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 from there they can gauge where you're responsible, what you leave, and things like that. Yeah. So that all at the end of the day plays a role in the authors manager approving and declining my leave. Obviously, what we're discussing here is very generic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, they, 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 it's not a one size fits all. So I'm just giving broad strokes in I terms of what they look at, and it's very it's very watered down what I'm explaining because of time constraints. Yeah. Like look, yeah. <clears throat> okay. No, 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 go for it. I just want us to be sensitive to time. Um, so so if, if, if yeah, I, I want us to feel some questions as well, uh, if you if you don't mind, but carry on. So let me just quickly explain B. So B is when I'm booked off for, for a longer period, this is an extra B, my apologies. It's for 30 days or more. For example, I'm booked off for the term, I'm booked off for two months, then I apply, uh, then I will, uh, my doctor, my physician will complete an extra B. Uh, it's, 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 uh, once again, as of October last year, uh, it's a slightly thicker document, but they have uh, lessened the docu uh, the pages, if I can call it that. So it's it's a, it's a bit lesser in in terms of the number of pages than it used to be. Okay. All right, where the doctor I have a section, the school principal has a section, me as the employee has a section to complete <coughs> and so on. And like I said, <coughs> what's important here is to attach as much medical evidence as possible that I can provide. And the operative, uh, the operative word, or the key word, if I can call it that way, is that my medical evidence needs to prove that I am incapacitated. Right? Right. So, and you said it earlier, the onus is on me as the employee to provide that evidence. I can't blame my doctor. I can't blame my psychiatrist. Uh, I can't blame me. I can't blame the union. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. No. So just be wary of that. Uh, viewers and colleagues and all right last week the question was was put to to, to us Lee. unfortunately because of time constant i couldn't answer it fully but if i if i gauge or and I remember the question properly it was what if my leave is declined I yeah. i've applied for, i've applied for one i've applied for two days i applied for 30 days whatever amount of days an extra year next year doesn't matter uh, according to me i have provided all the evidence that i need to provide okay yeah. then I have the right to lodge a grievance. Okay. And what would, and what's important about the grievance to note, guys, is that normally the department would send me a letter. And I say normally, for those lucky enough to get the letter, and I'm not here to to to, to bad mouth the employer, but those lucky enough to get the letter, the letter will then state the reasons why my leave was declined. Now, sometimes uh, they might not give full reasons, and then the grievance is nice just to say, oh, let's have a chat, guys. Uh, so I've applied for this. Uh, I've applied for 10 days as an example. Uh, why did you uh, Why did you decline my leave employer? So they will say this and they will say that and they will say that. What I normally advise members is that take that information, go back, go back to your to your doctor and say, doctor, this is what they are saying is lacking from my report. All right. Uh, uh, so they're not saying uh, 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 I wasn't sick or whatever. They, they might just say, according to your evidence, it doesn't prove that you were incapacitated. All right. Uh, I know it's a bit tricky there, but uh, any questions so far, Lee, that you want me to... Yeah. To, 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 no, no, I'll, 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 I'll reserve my one or two questions for the slot okay. after the next slide. Um, no I just want us to move along. Just, just very briefly on temporary, or for rather permanent incapacity leave. Just very briefly. On yeah, look, uh, um, in, the, in the good old days, we used to call it medical boarding. It's now called uh, a next year E where my doctor, my specialist, my physician feels that, uh, let's use the example you were using earlier, my voice, I, I, I need my voice to teach. My voice is never coming back. You know, I'm losing my eyesight and things like that. I've got terminal cancer. Uh, I've got a back problem, whatever the case might be. And the doctor feels, uh-uh, this is not going to recover. So hence, I need to apply for 
permanent incapacity. All right. right. The the thing that 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 that, that viewers and listeners must note here, Lee, let's assume I apply for 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 permanent incapacity for whatever illness I have. My apologies. Um, I and and I want to. And I want to be at home. I still need to complete an extra A or an extra B. If it's a short period of time, it's an extra A. If it's a longer period, uh, I would have to apply for an extra B. So what am I saying? I can still be actively working and apply for permanent incapacity. As an example, like I was saying, maybe my hearing is going, my eyesight is going, my voice is going. So I, I maybe I can still I can still carry on. So that can happen. So it might sound a bit strange. And how can I apply for permanent incapacity and, and still be working? But just remember, guys, when you do apply for permanent incapacity and your doctor books you off, you must be at home. You need to complete either an extra A or an extra B if you have exhausted your 36 days. I hope that makes sense. Normally, with, 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 with permanent incapacity, if, if, if my medical evidence can't be that convincing, my employer would possibly send me for a second opinion just to make sure. Because once they medically board you, it's final. There's no coming back for you after this. Yeah, let me get out of the system. Okay, um, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the questions and answer. Maybe sure. for me, just to quick start to kick start this one. So, so if I if I sum it up correctly, if I is the the onus is on the educator or the employee to 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 prove incapacity in the event of temporary incapacity or obviously permanent incapacity through my medical, uh, through my medical evidence that I submit. Right. And then, it should be. Yes. All right. And then what I what I summed up is that this confidential this confidentiality thing is that it's out by the window because this particular leave entitlement is at the mercy of the employer or the discretion of the employer. So you basically have to or it would be in your best interest to to disclose the nature of your illness for the employer to make a determination whether to grant right. the leave or not. All right, that is right. what I'm hearing. And right. you also said that in the event where the leave application is declined for whatever reason after it's been communicated, there's a recourse in the form of a grievance procedure. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to the decision will be overturned. Am I right, Faiz? Or after I've lodged this grievance in response to the let's say my application being declined. Yes, that's correctly. But like I said. The explanation the employee will now give me. Remember the letter they're supposed to send me. Just give uh, uh, outlines, uh, just b basic reasons why it was declined. It's very sure. generic. It's basically okay. uh, ninety percent of the time it's a copy and paste letter. So it doesn't yeah. give a lot of information. So the grievance meeting in this is nice way in the sense that the employer now engages with me and say, "You see, yeah, you applied for this. That was the reason why it was declined. That was the reason why it was declined, and so on and so on and so on." Okay. And the the, the the outcome of the grievance meeting, if it's uh, declined due to uh, medical evidence, because there are, there are other reasons why it can be declined. Maybe this time we can go there. But let's assume for the sake of this example, it is because of medical evidence that my leave is declined. Uh, and the employer, it's always nice enough to say, but if you can furnish me with additional medical evidence, they're willing to, to re-look at your application. Okay. For so then I will go back to my doctor or my practitioner or whoever book me off and say, guys, this is what the employer is saying. According to right. the, the pillar policy, this is the requirements. Can you please assist? And that right. is normally the route we go. If it's declined okay. due to due to insufficient medical evidence. And and, I, and, and like you rightfully say, the, 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 the emphasis here in additional medical evidence, not what you've already submitted. Correct, yes, correct. All right. I'm going to look at some comments, colleagues. Um, uh, let me just see, Glenn, what does Glenn say? Glenn says, um, how does injury on duty work? Glenn Slayman, Glenn, as I've mentioned earlier, this one, the segment tonight is a, is a, is a pillar one, or a temporary capacity and permanent one. And then, of course, the family responsibility one, which we'll delve into later. But you've got for ease's details. Maybe you can just pop me a mail. I think that's a Department of Labor issue, but I don't want to express myself there. I don't have the expertise necessarily always to, to do it. But for ease, you can maybe... Uh, connect with Glenn offline if you want to. If you want to engage the question, then you're welcome no, to do no, so. I can, I can do that. All right. And then Ronal, what is Ronal saying here? Ronal says, Who run the world, girls? Yes, Ronal. Yes, yes, yes. It's Women's Month. Thank you for representing. Um, Miss, Miss Okay is from Valerie's office in the house. She's tagging a whole lot of people. Um, and uh, who else? I'm looking for questions. I'm looking for questions. 
Sean is saying hello, hello, Sean, Nero, one of our partners, and Steli Lala. Uh, okay, she's probably just a, okay. Linton is just saying hello from Cryfontaine. Well, hello to you too. And somebody's here from Oatswood and Shiddle is a Jumat. Okay, and then I've got Leanne, Leanne Bathgate, Director, Deputy Director, Employee Relations, Western Cape. She says, hello, Leanne. Each case to be judged on merits in approving incapacity and subject to the medical evidence produced. Yeah. But is a comment on that one? Like you've, uh, No, that's just... so true. Remember what I said? They, they attach two leave cycles to, to check. Whether I was abusing yeah. sick leave, did I submit medical evidence in terms of sick certificates when I was when I was off for one or two days, and um, I said the operative word is medical evidence when you apply for temporary incapacity leave, and it must prove that I'm incapacitated. I'm referring now to my medical evidence leave, uh, and not that I'm sick. The end is spot on. Thanks, the end. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, if I is okay, Peter is watching from. Montague, hello Peter Swanapool, and uh, Kashifa from Mitchell's Plain, Albukov. What does that mean? Come on, Kashifa. Are you sick? Are you, are you playing sick? <laughs> and then, okay, Glenn is asking one question here. To whom must I hand in my annexure A and B forms, Faiz? No, that's a very good question. Lee. Thanks for that. I, I forgot to I forgot to mention that. No, thanks, Glenn. Uh, um, I will have to admit it to my to my school principal. Because you remember what I said earlier, Ali. With a new annexure A and annexure B form, there's a there's a section and a part my principal must also complete. The old form never had this, right? Uh, if you can go back to the Z1 leave form, there's a section there that says to the principal, do you approve or do you decline the leave or not approve, right? The annexure A doesn't have that provision, but it just asks for the principal's comments. I think that yeah, no, no. now let me let me correct myself, Lee. There, there is a section with where it allows the principal to say approve or decline. So you will have to give it in to 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 the school for the okay. principal to complete his or her section as well. Okay, good. For is yes, a yes, a long one. Um, but this is from Tulani. Oh, I'm eyes deceiving. What's going on? Okay, Tulani Patla is asking. Good day. Last week I had a question which was vague. This week I'm attending an exam in which I'm a participant and mentor for our former students. The program started last year when the students were were still. At the still, I don't know, reading hand, and I'd leave the school to attend the program. This time around, the classes used to be out during the school holidays. I just wanted to find out which type of leave do I apply for. Um, he asked the principal, and there was no clear answer in terms of this one. Do you get this question, Vais, from Tulani? Let me, let me uh, just read it again. Just give me another second or two. My apologies. He, yeah, he's attending an exam. He's a participant and he's mentoring students. Um, Yes, Stelani, you're going to have to give us more info here. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure whether he's, he's mentoring the, the students or whether he himself is writing the exam. So I'm, yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe you can just maybe you can just rephrase that for us, Lee. Uh, yeah. Maybe just put the question in a different way, and hopefully I will be able to answer it. If, uh, yeah. if Tulani, please, Tulani, uh, if you don't mind, just give a bit more meat on the bone. Okay. To learn if you're the same person who asked a question in relation to the sport thing, uh, maybe I can draw your attention to chapter H14.1 of the pair. Maybe just read through that one um, if this is the same question and then and then maybe see if that makes sense to you and then take it from there. Um, all right. Look, the questions are coming thick and fast. Uh, Roshana is asking, Roshana, good evening. What if you can't afford to go to the doctor phase? Yeah, that's a tough one, uh, Roshana, but unfortunately, the policy states that you will have to attach a medical certificate, unfortunately. So I'm not sure whether the clinics are free or the day hospitals, I'm not sure, but unfortunately, you will have to attach a medical certificate to a sick note when you apply for temporary capacity. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Good. And then, Pammy, this is a question that you, you probably missed out last week. Just wanted to find out when is the new cycle. But is the cycle starts this year, eh? am I correct? The current cycle started on the 1st of January 2022. And then the cycle, I'm just talking sick leave, and the cycle sick will leave. Leave, uh, on the 31st of December 2024. Okay. All other leave categories is, is in a 12-month cycle. It's only sick leave that we, that we work in a three-year cycle, which started this year. 
All right. Okay. Thank you. And then I think we'll take the last one. And before we move on to family responsibility leave, uh, does Neem is asking an in-depth question. If working for a collaboration school, but salary is funded by WCD, upon having a challenging pregnancy, uh, is that the partner, I suppose, has requested for temporary capacity leave till the date of delivery? What course of action? To, uh, what would be the course of action? That's an interesting one for you. No, look, Lee, it uh, doesn't matter whether I work at a collaboration school or WCED school. My employer determines my leave conditions, all right? So if the WCED pays my salary, they my employer. If the SGB pays my salary, then they my employer. So if I'm WCED, once I, as Neem wants you, you, you will qualify first for your 36 days, and once you've used up 36 days, then you apply for temporary capacity leave. Doesn't matter the reason you can apply. Now, obviously, whether it will be approved or not, that's a different matter. I've explained now the medical evidence you must provide, x-ray, all of that. So that is obviously the mandatory to it. And the more medical evidence you can provide, uh, the better for you. But if you're not employed by the WCD, you will have to look at your contract of employment in terms of what categories of leave do you qualify for. Yeah. So I'm not sure who employer is. But like I said, it was WCD, the, the Employment of Educators Act, chapter, uh, in the PAM, Chapter H, like Ria just made the reference around to the other gentleman, will yeah. then apply it to you, Tasnina. I hope you're all employed in terms of your WC, in terms of the WCD. Yeah, she, I, I, it would appear that way. But again, this is now, we, we're moving into the area of <laughs> maternity leave. But again, for Tasnim's uh, benefit, Tasnim, Chapter H, 8. Look at maternity. Yeah, that is if you are in fact employed by WCT. All right, let's let's move along. Uh, okay, here's another one in terms of the the the. the I, I don't want to go here, but anyways, just this is the last one on maternity leave. Good evening, Vaughn is asking. A colleague gave premature birth. Since a baby is premature, can she delay her maternity? I suppose leave. Baby is in hospital and will be for a long time. Yes. Okay. That's that's a very nice question. I hope you don't mind me answering that, Lee. Sure. Um, let's just go, go quickly go to that name. Uh, uh, um, paternity leave is when I give birth. She she hasn't given birth yet. So if she's sick prior to, to uh, prior to giving birth, it will be sickly. If she have exhausted the 36 days, then she will apply for temporary incapacity leave. Remember I said, if she's employed by the WCD. Or her contract of whoever the employer stipulates that she qualifies for that categories of leave, then that's fine. Coming to Vaughan now. That the minute I give birth, whether it's premature or not, the minute the baby is born, and I'll use today's date, what is today's date? The 3rd of August. If my if my baby was born today prematurely, then that is the day my, what do you call this thing? My maternity. Matern leave, right? I said, uh, if I'm permanently employed, I qualify for four months paid leave. And uh, um, let's assume, uh, 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 Vaughan, that... Uh, um, she was still at school yesterday, just as an example. So I wasn't off, so my maternity leave starts whenever either the baby is born or, obviously that's for the latest, my maternity leave can start, or when I intend to go off. But because it's premature, let's, let's assume that the baby was born today. So 3rd of August, 3rd of September, 3rd of October, 3rd of November, 3rd, the 4th of December, you're back at school. What Vaughan is asking, but the baby's in hospital for a long time. Now we're getting to family responsibility. So I'll cover that if one don't mind when we get to family responsibility. But maternity leave is only four months. I can't extend maternity leave. All right. But I'll explain now when we get to family responsibility what happens when my child is sick, my husband is sick, my wife is sick. So 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 maybe it's a good on that note to to jump right into family responsibility with your permission, Lee. All yours, sir. Okay. So in addition to my sick leave, which is 36 days in a three-year cycle, which is paid leave, if I follow the criteria, uh, as educators and public servants, I qualify for paid special leave. All right? In that leave, I have family responsibility, leave, which is five days for the year. That's for, for educators as well as public servants. Then I have family, I call it family responsibility leave sick, and I call it family responsibility leave death when somebody passes on. In my family, I've got another five days for the year. Remember, I said sick leave works in a three-year cycle or other leave work in a 12-month cycle. Obviously, maternity leave, it's, it's, it's just four months. Does, uh, 
Mesti kena bayar kena ke mana kadang mesti ke kalam ni. This is a joke, colleagues. Um, and then four days urgent private matters that is only for educators. So let me start with family responsibility. Uh, uh, sick, I call it family responsibility. Sick family responsibility. Death. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. An educator shall be granted five working days leave per annual leave cycle. And I can uh, might as well have added the public servant with you, a secretary of the school or the non teaching staff. Same thing, right? So an educator, public servant, shall be granted five working leave days in the annual leave cycle. In other words, in a 12-month cycle, when there's only there's only two, two categories, right? Well, three actually. But listen carefully. When the educator's spouse or life partner gives birth. Now, that two words is very importantly, right? It must be my, oh, my husband. It must be my wife or... It must be my life partner, not for girlfriends, not for scalumpies, right? Uh, like in Afrikaans, I can't say it in English. Maybe you can translate for me, Lee. Uh, ik moet hou of ik moet <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't say that in English. I don't know how to yeah, say it. Yeah, but now, yes, you might not understand that. No, but listen, I mean, let's talk about this, the definition of life partner. What, I mean, what, what constitutes a life partner? Can I change my life partner every... You know, I mean, let's talk about that. <laughs> what, what is a life no. partner? Uh, ten years and longer qualifies as a life partner. A what? Ten years and longer. I'm, 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 I'm in a relationship with the same person for at least okay. ten years and longer. Right, that qualifies uh, uh, as a life partner. All right. So is that is that defined as ten years plus ten plus years? Yep. Okay. This, all right. For the specific leave category. So, okay. so anyway, right. so colleagues, it's my the educator spouse, a spouse or life partner gives birth, and then I qualify as the husband to get five days family responsibility leave. All right. And then another category is if my husband or my wife, my child under the age of 18, is sick, then I then qualify for five days family responsibility leave to either take my doctor. If I'm if I'm the husband, it will be my wife. If I'm the wife, it will be my husband, or my son, or my daughter. Remember, Lee, under the age of 18 years and the younger, right? All right. So my child. Then what is mandatory here, obviously for the first category will be the birth certificate of, 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 of the baby. But the second category, then I will have to attach a sick note. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes uh, the husband has the flu, or the wife doesn't matter. Yeah. Now I know if I go to the pharmacy, I know which meds to buy. I self medicate, and then nine to ten times uh, uh, that will do the trick. But unfortunately, if, if I want to take off from work in order to 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 uh, and, and 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 apply for family responsibility, I will have to take my husband, my wife, or my child to the doctor. Right. Otherwise, my leave will be declined, and that's very important. Thing. A medical certificate is compulsory, and then, and obviously that will be my my husband's name or my wife's name or my child's name. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, just uh, just quickly going back to the first category. Uh, obviously, not on the slides here, but the 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 spouse or the husband can also apply for paternity leave, three days paid paternity leave, uh, in addition to family responsibility leave. In actual fact, you're gonna apply for eight days. Right? Okay. That's now the, the husband. So it's the five sick leave, you're under family responsibility, and your Correct. three paternity. Okay. Only for birth, right? Only for right. the case of childbirth. Okay. So okay. the second category. So the second category, um, an educator shall be granted five working days leave per annual leave cycle if the educator's child, spouse, or life partner dies. Now, this is important to note, Ali, it's five working days, same with the above category, for the year. It's not five days per sickness or or five days per death. You know, it's, it's five days for the year. So, as an example, if somebody passed on uh, in the first half of the year and have utilized all five days family responsibility leave, uh, in, uh, family responsibility leave, death, then you have another funeral in the family then, I can't apply for family responsibility. 
Well, again, but the, 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 we'll be regarded as leave without pay because I'm exhausted five days for the year already for that specific so, category. So right, what so you're right, saying is... This quality, uh, my apologies, Lee, let me just finish my sentence if you don't mind. So this, like I said, these two categories is for educators as well as your public servants at school. Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 sorry. So what you're saying is uh, so you must basically choose whose funeral to go to if you were to make use of the, this particular entitlement. Look... What I normally tell members is it depends my relationship with the deceased. Um, if it if it's if it's slightly distant family, or I don't need to make the funeral arrangements, then then then, then why take five days? But that's your call, obviously. It's not my call to make. I'm just I'm just batching yeah. on what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Now the job of the funeral is on a Saturday, you know, and, and, it, and there's no need for me to be there the Monday, the Tuesday, or the Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. or Friday, then just go the Saturday, sure. um, and then. The, the last part of family responsibility leave death is obviously the educator's immediate family member. And then what is mandatory is a death certificate. And also, you must also stipulate your relationship with the deceased. Is it my mother? Is it my father? Is it my mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother, sister, and so on and so on? Because sometimes not all, uh, not all siblings uh, and so on have the same surname. You know, maybe I get married with different fathers, whatever the case may be. It might have different surnames for whatever reason. So you will just indicate that it's my brother, or it's my mother, it's my mother-in-law, or father-in-law, and so on. And then mandatory is your, is your death certificate. So if you can just maybe move to the next slide, which speaks to urgent private matters. I will, I will, I just wanted to, for the benefit of, of, of those who might be wondering, and like sure. you mentioned it now, an immediate family member, the definition, there's a circular that, I find you might know the circular number, I can't recall it now, but but it, it's described as the, the, the parents, parents-in-law, ad adoptive parents, sister or brother-in-law, the grandparent, child, adopted child, stepchild, grandchild, or sibling. Those yes. are the, 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 uh, the, the only the, category is that, that, they, we, that they, the department that refers to when they say immediate family members. Yes. Gotcha. Hence, I'm saying, hence, I'm saying you must stipulate your relationship with the deceased. All right. But thanks for that, Lee. So when it comes to urgent private matters, uh, this is only for educators based at the school. I can be an office-based educator, maybe at the district office or head office, I don't qualify for this urgent private matters. Or I'm the secretary of the school or I'm the general foreman, then I do not qualify for family responsibility. Uh, uh, my apologies for urgent private matters. But like I said, the first two categories, family responsibility, sick, family responsibility, leave death, you do qualify for. So an institution-based or school-based educator may be granted special leave to attend an urgent private matter. All right, and uh, I get four days per calendar year. Okay, so this is a <laughs> this is a tamaleki. This is a tamaleki in that <laughs> um, if somebody has to ask me over the years I've been doing this, Lee, what is the definition of urgent private matters? Then it's the only category of leave that whether you in the Western Cape or whether you in KZN or in Gauteng, nobody knows the definition or can give you a definition of urgent private matters. We can give examples. So it is a tough one. I'll try my best to explain it, but I can merely give examples, Lee. And my apologies to the viewers, you know, and the listeners. I, I, I wish I could give a definition and say, uh, if you do this, that is urgent, but you do that, oh, that is definitely not urgent private matters. So, but I'll try my best to explain. Um, um, when I go to schools and explain this to members, I normally say that, the nature of which is such that it warrants your absence from work. That's all I can say in terms of a definition. So I'll give examples. I'll give examples. Um, I'll give examples. And uh, the, the, the famous okay. example is my, my geezer, bro. Yeah. I wonder if you have now a solar geezer, what happens now. But anyway, it's my whole solar <laughs> geezer. That is okay. Okay. You know? yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, another example, uh, maybe I was paying a traffic fine. I can use so many examples. Uh, yeah. If you look at family responsibility leave as an example, you'll see my mom is not in there. My yeah. father's not in there. My grandmother's not in there. You know, uh, my stepchild is not in there, right? So if my mom is sick, then I can use urgent private matters. Take it to the doctor. Fair and square. Uh, and I'm using examples. And like I said, guys, there is no 
but there's no definition. It's a bit difficult to explain. Uh, is it pay a traffic fine or something? Something, uh, something that I call it, it's urgent and private. But uh, the thing that the, uh, the colleagues must note and the viewers, Lee, is that when it says urgent and private, normally that's an indication to, 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 to educators that they, they mustn't tell the principal what, why they're taking this category. They say, no, so it's urgent and it's private. You yeah. have to have those colleagues to the principal, whatever category of leave. I mean, whatever the reason is for urgent private matters. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I normally tell, uh, and I normally tell uh, our members that, let's say it's of private and confidential nature, uh, principal not to repeat to anybody else. Uh, but you have to divulge, you know? Yeah. And a lot got to do with my <clears throat> use or abuse of leave in general that we yeah. determine. And uh, the phrase I normally use is my reputation precedes me at school. Yeah. As uh, somebody who don't abuse leave or do abuse leave and things like yeah. that. So, yeah. I'm just reminded about an incident. You and I went to a school in, um, I think it's in Somerset West in 2018, I remember. It's a primary school. I'm not sure what the name of the school is. And one of the ladies stood up whilst you were presenting this um, uh, leave measures uh, presentation. And she asked on the issue of urgent private matters, you know, um, she's living with a cat, you know, for the last however many years and uh, just she and the cat and the cat was stuck in the roof one day or in the tree or somewhere. And she got a call from the neighbor to school to say, listen, you must come home. Um, there's a, there's, you know, the cat has got stuck in the roof. Now, the question that one asks, that she asked at the time, I remember, and I can't remember what the response was, was, would that qualify for urgent private matters? Now, like you said, for me, in my mind, the test is urgent. In other words, does it warrant your immediate absence from work? And secondly, is it an emergency? Like, in other words, something that you didn't plan for. Now, if, 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 if in my, you know, humble understanding, if she passed those two tests, then I would probably want to hazard a guess and say, yes, for her, it's private. For her, it's urgent. But I don't know. <laughs> you know, and those are the scenarios um, that, that, that comes to a person's uh, way from time look, to time. Uh, no, that's a very, I, I remember that question, Lee. And thanks for reminding me. But with urgent private matters, uh, my tip I give to, to, to our members is that if you have proof that you can provide a speeding fine, you must go pay, I have an appearance in court, whatever, whatever the reason is, and I have proof, then a test that proof to make it a bit easier for me to, 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 to earn my absence uh, from work. But in cases where I don't have proof, or I can't provide proof for whatever reason, uh, let's use the, the cat in the roof or in the tree or whatever. I will just have to explain to the principal why nobody else could go and why I must go. And what proof my do I say again, Lee? What proof do I attach there? Look, I will just add the letter while I'll give an explanation to the principal. Remember, my relationship with the principal is such that he, he would know for easy, or at least he's absent. He knows I'm a cat person or I'm a dog person or whatever person. <laughs> my relationship with my principal becomes important now in terms of am I one who regularly abuses sick leave or not, where frequently go home early or come late and things like that. This all plays a role, right? Okay. Uh, in, in, in terms of that. Uh, the other category may be on another occasion that we can we can come back and do the rest of the, the chapter H. And the last category in chapter H is unpaid leave, which I may I be uh, maybe not a nice <laughs> category to explain, but um, yeah, maybe we can do that on another day. But what is important for, 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 for listeners and viewers to know the principal can't just say no. You must give a reason why. Yeah. You understand? Uh, no, no, no. That's not a good enough reason. Because you, you, you said it earlier in the two guys. Is it a fair request and is it a reasonable request? Is it? Yeah. And then the principal can't just say no. I think it's unfair, it's unreasonable, and things like that. And uh, obviously, there are cases where the principal can't say no. I'm not saying he, he or she can't say no. That, uh, that is not uh, um, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying give a reason why. Because I've explained now why I need to go quickly home and uh, sort out whatever. So okay. there will have to be a reason with. Faiz, I'm going I'm to ask you. I'm going to ask that we just uh, jump into some questions here before we have to yeah, sure, end sure. the show. Um, so Glenn sure. is saying, if my great-grandfather died, do I qualify for five days specially if my great-grandfather? Um, look, you... Uh, according to the immediate family, my grandfather 
my grandfather qualifies as immediate family, right? My father as well as my grandfather. Um, I don't think the department will have an issue, and I'm speaking here from um, Faizia, because grandfather is in there whether he's great or whether this is my grandfather. I would say yes, as long as I can okay. prove that he's my great grandfather. I would say yes, Glenn. All right, let's move along. Uh, Ronel is asking, saying, uh, can you please define life partner for me? I think for each you mentioned 10 plus years. Now, did I, did yeah, I guess, look did for, I... The, the, uh, for, for leave and so purposes, 10 plus years for the GP. If, if I want my life partner to, to, to inherit or to qualify for, for my pension contribution, uh, it's 15 years and longer. So that's our intricate explanation. We're just doing short, short answers. But like I said, at the end, maybe you want to give my, my, my email address, Glenn, uh, I mean, Glenn, uh, Lee, sorry. Just sure. so that um, I can maybe explain in more detail. And I'm just quickly rushing through because of time constraints. No, uh, thank you. Uh, Ali. All right. We have quite a few instances where, where staff took five days of funeral and all other family response leave are exhausted. What leave can one take? Even if urgent private matters are also exhausted. Ms. Okes from Valir Swap is asking that. Yes, so like she... I said, Ms. Okes, unfortunately, we're not doing... We're not doing uh, um, what do you call this thing? Unpaid leave, but you can you can you can apply for unpaid leave because uh, if if the leave category is up, it's up. You know, yeah. uh, let's let's use in the terrible scenario, especially during COVID. Uh, I lose one family member. We go to the funeral, and then this for the sake of this example, I've utilized all five days, and then a couple of months later, another family member passes on a close relative. Then it's up, all right? All right. But let me just carry on before 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 time catches up. Uh, let me just finish uh, uh, the second part of 14 working days may technically be used for urgent private matters. Right, so let me explain what the uh, amendments to the PAM, uh, just go back, yeah, just stop there, please. All right, what the amendments to the PAM then say is that, um, and these amendments were all promulgated on the 6th of February 2016, I think, yeah, yeah, that is the year. So, so what happens now, Lee, right? Um, let's use this example. My husband, my wife, my child is sick, right? They two days in the hospital, right? So when they're hospitalized, or I take them to the doctor, it's fine, it qualifies for, my apologies for that, I qualify for family responsibility leave sick, okay? Now the recovery period, let's make it, let's make it five days. Let's make it five days. So. I can't qualify for family responsible. I, I can qualify for the two days they were in hospital, as an example, but I can't qualify for the five days that they now know because that's the recovery period. The certificate yeah. will just say Lee Hoffman of Easter Sim is in hospital for two days, right? Uh, uh, two and three August. It's a two days. Now there's a recovery period. Then I can technically then utilize urgent private matters. And I deliberately said five days. Listen to the catch here, Lee. Right, remember, I have four days for urgent private matters, but now I need five. Listen to this. What is the amendment to the PAM now? Stipulate is that I can take two days family responsibility leave. I take my four days urgent private matters. I still have one day left. Okay. Uh, I need five. Now, let's, for the sake of this example, say that nobody has passed on in my family So I, uh, this year. So I still have five days, which I may, as an educator, utilize for urgent private matters. Or yeah. I've only utilized two days. Must listen carefully, Lee. All right. I've only utilized two days of family responsibility, assuming I never took the other three. Then I can take one of those days of family responsibility yeah. sick <clears throat> and utilize that as my fifth day. And I hope I make sense to everybody, Lee. Yeah. As long as I don't exceed the basket, what's in the basket of fourteen of, days. Of 14 gotcha. days. All right. So for ease, I'm, I'm saying is I can marry two categories, all right? Gotcha. For funeral, I was saying in the COVID times, all right, um, this family member passed and I've used five days, all right? Yeah. So a question, another family member passes on, I've used up all my five. If I if I still have my four days urgent five minutes, I can use that. And if 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 I didn't utilize my family responsibility leave six days, then I still have five days. So technically, then I would have nine days left. All right. Remember, What's important, uh, colleagues and viewers, to remember where I can attach proof. It makes it so much easier to attach the proof. Right? Okay. My 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm in interrupting you. I'm going to flag just a few. I've got two two minutes for questions, but I want you just to be as brief as possible. And we will put your details at the end of the of the thread for people to email you if we don't get your questions. So please, colleagues, don't don't feel discouraged if we don't get your questions. But just for the sake of time, Faiz, can you just be brief in terms of responding to some of these? Some of okay. them needs a little bit more explanation, but just broad strokes here. So yeah, Aladina is saying... What if your child is still at school and is 18 years old? Do I get family responsibility? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Because he's 18. That's fine. All right. Pumla is saying, does the principal have rights to advise the WCD if she feels that a teacher is abusing leave every term she, he or she feels incapacity leave? Yes, I said that last week. If the principal feels that I'm abusing sick leave, they can follow the disciplinary rule. Yes. All right. Good. Yes, Jackie is yes. saying, Jacqueline, uh, Manar, so just clarity. So just one clarity. It's five days family responsibility for sick husband and children under 18 and also from the same five days for funeral or is the funeral separate for, for funerals from sickness? No, Jacqueline, it's five days for family responsibility leave sick and five days for family responsibility leave death. So the right. 10 days. Five right. days. Five. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, Pumla, Pumla is asking, does a school qualify for substitute for a school admin clerk, which was on maternity leave? Unfortunately, that's only for educators. That's Thank you. All right. Um, now, yes, uh, uh, if I have to appear in court, does it qualify as special leave or as urgent private matter? It depends, Glenn. You know, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm subpoenaed to the court, then I have to go. Otherwise, I'll be in contempt of court. So that will be special paid leave because I don't have okay. a choice and I have to go. But if I'm the complainant or something like that, then I can use it as urgent private matters and then just prove that I was in court full day okay. or half a day, whatever. But if I remember if, if 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 I'm subpoenaed to a case to testify, I don't have a choice. I will have to go. Otherwise they will lock me up like they could zoom out being contempt of court. If I All right. good, good, good. Kelly saying, Kelly, you didn't listen, eh? We've explained this one. Don't be naughty. If you are part of the public service staff or and your geezer burst, what leave should we take? I if you're a public staff member, you will have to take your annual leave days if it happens in the week, unfortunately. For educators, okay. urgent private matters, but for your public service or, 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 or the ground staff, as we call them, uh, they will have to utilize annual leave, unfortunately. Okay. Ms. Ms. Rabani from, I think Ms. Rabani is a principal at, uh, is it Prince George Drive Primary? I think. Sorry if I'm getting this wrong, ma'am. If I go on a spiritual conference for a week, can I use special leave? I have no cap leave. Um, look, it's all in the motivation, all right? If you're the principal, then you will have to convince your circuit manager, give the brief of what the conference is about and so on, uh, because you do qualify for three days, uh, a leave for religious observance, sport or culture, obviously, unfortunately, you got there, but it just depends on what the motivation is, but you can, if the motivation is okay, and, 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 and um, you will have to get permission from your supervisor, if you're the principal, it'll be the circuit manager. And if Good. you're the educator, it will be the principal then, yes. Okay, right. I'm uh, I'm just grabbing random ones here now. Um, Ronel, Ronel is saying, should one provide evidence to prove that a person is one's life partner? How do you prove such a thing, like length of relationship? <laughs> I said, yeah. we look at you now, Ronel. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> I'm assuming that uh, I'll be proud of my life partner if I had a life partner, you know. I'm, I'll say I'm married for 20, 30 years, whatever the case may be. But um, I prove my life partner. But I think it's a reasonable and a valid question, Lee. I prove my life partner by, by completing an affidavit yeah. uh, to the police station to say that this. And I mean, well, you, you, you swear in the oath, so they would assume that, you, that you're telling the truth here. Okay. All right, Shireen, uh, David, irrespective of your child's age, it is still your child, so why is the age capped? I'm assuming she refers to this illness under family responsibility. Yeah, the only, uh, the, Shereen, the only time that the, 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 the family responsibility leave is not capped if my, if my, if my uh, child has severe uh, special needs, you know, and okay. you can't define the age. Then it right. doesn't matter which age they are. They would be, still be regarded as, as a child because of their, maybe their mental capacity. But I think, uh, and, and, and I can't speak for the department, but it's normally when they're 18, they regard it as adults, they can go to the doctor on their own, if you get what I'm saying. And, and normally they're on their own already. And it has to be kept, unfortunately, somewhere, Shereen. I, I might not okay. agree with it, but unfortunately, that's the rule. 
Right, the last one we're taking here, and then I'll put Faiza's email in the in the comments for for everybody. Yes, the answer right. is yes. The answer right. is yes. That's okay. your choice, whether it's two females or two males, heterosexual, same sex doesn't matter. One hundred percent. All right, colleagues, on that note, uh, I, I really love the engagement and the interaction, but we we just knocked on one hour, 60 minutes, and time flies when we're having fun. And as mm -hmm. you can see, we, we really... Can we I maybe just have one more input, Lee? My, no, my for sure, for sure. I want, um, yeah. uh, I want to put it out to the to the colleagues and the viewers out there, uh, depending on my schedule, because I'm currently in George, and tomorrow I'm going to Beaufort West. But... Please invite me to your school. It takes about one and a half to two hours to do this presentation. And uh, please invite me. I, I'll make time to come. Seriously. Uh, doesn't matter which union you belong to. Doesn't matter which area you are in. Uh, as far as possible that we can accommodate you. Uh, so please feel free to, to send that invitation to us. And, we can, and it's nice up and close and personal when you're at your particular staff. We just uh, sort out your issues at your school. So please feel free to invite me to your to your school uh, uh, colleagues and viewers. Thank you, Lee. No, thank you for is And as you can see, uh, I mean, one hour is not enough to delve into. I mean, we, there's still another few slides that we had to get to, but unfortunately, and I look, I want to disclaim at this stage, this is not an Aptosa platform. This is a, just an information sharing platform. And I've invited um, Satu uh, to, 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 to on the platform as well. I'm hoping to get them on in the coming weeks. They've, 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 uh, they've indicated the interest. Um, I've chatted to, to Mr. Rustin from uh, the, the provincial the provincial secretary and hopefully he's gonna uh you know come on board and i also want to reach out to sr or e and all the other stakeholders just to as a means of getting uh various role players in in, in on the platform to, to to you know to mediate some of these things and then maybe the department to get them on from their side from the employer side because i think some of these things are also open to i suppose it's interpretation that's what we call in labor terms arbitrary but nevertheless for ease i want to thank you very much man you know this was an amazing uh, session once again. I'm sure everybody who tuned in tonight will agree with me that, that that they've learned a lot, even for especially for our young or let's rather say novice teachers or the first time teachers who do not know how how these things affect them. I suppose. And and but yeah, thank you for for really sharing your expertise this evening. We we uh, I, I appreciate it. You you know. Um, yes, and, and hopefully moving forward, maybe we'll, we'll first give the other people an opportunity to to indicate their willingness to jump on. We'll, we'll invite you on again at some point in time again. But thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, I'm going to put Faiz's uh, details in the comment section. Uh, let me just do it now before we play us out. Um, and then you can email him. He's given uh, the permission for me to share his email address. And you can email him with all your outstanding queries that you may have. And there's an open invitation. Please, please, please invite him to your school if you feel the need to do so and uh, of course with the permission of the, the management team and, and and whatever processes you need to follow at your school but that's unfortunately all from my side tonight i want to wish you strength i want to wish you uh, courage and for the for the balance of the week i know it's a short well a short week next week so are we all looking forward to the to the long weekend uh, once again i want to wish all our women warriors in education a blessed uh, uh, women's month and thank you for the contribution that you make to our to our uh, nation Faiz, you've got 20 seconds just to make a concluding remark and then i'll play us out no i want to say thank you for having me only because um uh, the, the sad part for me as a, as a union is also when, when, when our members come and they leave is declined just because they didn't know which category to apply or how to apply. So hence my request. So please invite me to your school. Thank you, Lee. All right. Thank you very much, college. Uh, colleagues. I said college, you know. Stay safe. God bless. <laughs> Oza, see,